Hello everyone and welcome back. In this new lesson we're going to be introducing the notion of derived or computed signals. So let's go back here to this simple example where we have a counter which is a signal and we have here this functionality where we are incrementing the counter when we click here on the increment button. Now imagine the following situation. Imagine that you would like to define here a derived counter which contains the value of this counter times 10. Now, the correct way to do this is to calculate a derived signal. So that's one of the main advantages of signals is that we can get notified when they change and we can do an action in response to that. We can either create a side effect, we are going to see that later on in this course, or we can calculate another derived value from the signal value. All right, so let's see how can we create here a derived counter here based on the counter. We're going to be using for that the signal computed API. The computed API is going to allow you to define a signal that is derived from one or more source signals. All right, so the first thing that we have to do is here inside the computed function, we need to access the source signals from which we are going to be deriving this new signal. In our particular case, this is going to be here the value of the counter. So let's go ahead and let's grab it here explicitly by accessing the counter signal by invoking it. And now we have here the value of this signal. Now all we have to do here on the computed function is to return the value of the derived signal. We can do so in the following way. We are going to access here the value of the counter. We multiply it by 10 and that's it. All of the sudden we have created here a derived signal. Now let's go ahead and let's print out the value of this derived signal here to the screen. I'm going to call this the derived value and let's go ahead and let's access the derived counter signal. Let's add here the parentheses in order to get the signal value. And let's see this in action. So both signals start here at zero, as we can see. And as if I click here on the button, we can see that the derived value is 10 times the counter value as expected. So as you can see, it's very easy to create derived signals from an existing signal. And in this case, we are just deriving this counter here from one signal, but we could potentially derive it from as many source signals as we want. Our application would in practice have a chain of signals that depend on each other. As you can see, it's very simple using the computed API to create a derived signal from one or more source signals. Now, it's important to bear in mind that derived signal here is a read-only signal. So, as you can see, it's of type signal of number. And this is unlike here the source signal, which is a writable signal. So this means that if I go here to my increment function and I access the derived counter, I have here no set and no update methods. I cannot modify the value of this signal. It is strictly read only. In our next lesson, we're going to understand in detail how the mechanism that defines the dependencies between two signals works and we're also going to become aware of some pitfalls to avoid when creating derived signals using the computed API.